The Historic Preservation Alliance, or HPA, of Colorado Springs is a nonprofit advocate for and supporter of historic preservation in our community. By means of this presentation, Patricia Doyle and John Haney, HPA board members, will share information about the role economics plays in historic preservation. A segment at the end of this presentation will be devoted to the HPA and this nonprofit's outreach to the Colorado Springs community. For now, welcome to our presentation entitled The Who, What, Where, and Why of Historic Preservation. Historic preservation is an expansive topic that encompasses the past, present, and future. At its essence, it's about how we as a society can honor our heritage and help save the best of the past for future generations to learn from and enjoy. The purpose of our speech is threefold. First, to provide a working definition of historic preservation. Second, to convey the economic viability of historic preservation and to share as examples structures and places within the historic fabric of Colorado Springs. And third, to explain how the Historic Preservation Alliance of Colorado Springs, or HPA, advocates for historic preservation in our community. But first, two of my favorite quotes. The first from Jane Jacobs, a preservation activist who lived in New York City and wrote the book Death and Life of Great American Cities in 1961. And I quote, once you demolish your built heritage, you are from anywhere. It was Jane Jacobs' theory that neighborhoods were safer when there were eyes on the street, that is neighbors and when applicable shopkeepers who are naturally drawn to the life of the street and who in the course of their activities monitor the street and what goes on there. There is a sense of community, people know each other. The second quote will introduce you to the creator of place economics, Donovan Remkema, and the concepts that form the base of today's presentation. Historic preservation, he said, is a responsibility movement rather than a rights movement. It is a movement that urges us toward the responsibility of stewardship, not merely the right of ownership. What is preservation? Whether it refers to people or structures or to the renovation of landscaping and structures as depicted by these two photos, preservation is maintenance. The house and yard to the left is that same house and yard to the right once renovated. One working definition of historic preservation, according to the National Trust for Historic Preservation, is the property or site generally needs to be 50 years old or older. Although there are exceptions, which I will not address today, it should exhibit a significant architecture, architectural design and workmanship, demonstrate the work of a master architect it's sometimes associated with significant events and or people in American history and may reveal significant archaeological information such as that found on Native American land or the French colonial city excavated near the Arch in St. Louis. And of utmost importance, historic places provide a historical record that informs us about our culture, past, and present. A few examples of architectural styles are Queen Anne and Craftsman, mid-century modern, the international style. Each of the homes pictured above are at least 50 years old. However, people who like a particular style sometimes build a new home and replicate a style they like. Here is an example of brutalism, and this is the Geisel Library in La Jolla, California, built in 1970. All of these structures shown above are historic. What appeals is another matter. By means of interpretation, the Amache Interment Camp, located on the southeast plains of Colorado, provides the chance to have a conversation about an interaction with significant past events. So historic preservation is collaborative, it's changing, it occurs statewide in rural areas, small Colorado towns, and larger Colorado cities. Incentives are key. This slide is from a study paid for by History Colorado State Historical Fund grant. 
published in Preservation for a Change in Colorado. It includes historic preservation study data from 2014, published in 2017, that shows the positive impacts of historic preservation in Colorado. Briefly, total direct impacts of rehabilitation projects to owners who received state or federal tax credits was $3.9 billion. Total impacts from existing Colorado Main Street programs was $53.3 billion. A heritage tourist spending impact in Colorado was $15.8 million. The data shows a growth in historic site visits went from 16 to 21 percent. It also shows that property values typically increase in local historic districts. Architectural styles are only one vital aspect of historic preservation. So let's now focus on some of the historic fabric of the Colorado Springs community to illustrate the 24 reasons why historic preservation is economically viable. But first, some background information. Place Economics, a Washington, D.C.-based development consulting firm, is internationally respected for its groundbreaking work in documenting the economic value of historic preservation. The firm led by Donathan Ripkema specializes in services, services to public and nonprofit clients who are pursuing revitalization and the reuse of historic structures. Mr. Rimkema's findings are widely utilized to convey a number of essential aspects about historic preservation that have relevance in towns and cities across the world, including right here in Colorado Springs. Through continual research in cities across the country, 2014 to 2020, Place Economics has collected data to support the alignment of historic preservation with economic viability. What much of this presentation hopes to reflect is that beyond the beauty of the architecture or the sentimentality regarding the past, historic preservation and economic viability go hand in hand. It is what makes Colorado Springs and other cities unique. It is a message every community needs to hear. The number one reason and first evidence that historic preservation is economically viable is jobs. Rehabilitation and new construction pro projects service industry and government and office buildings illustrated in these photos are like located downtown. The jobs they generate within a community represents money that remains in the community. The second reason historic preservation is viable is because it is often the catalyst for downtown revitalization. The photo to the left re underscores revitalization as reflected by new but unique construction for a coffee shop at the south side of historic Acacia Park, home to Uncle Wilbur's Fountain, and the photo to the right, Sugar's, is a delightful restaurant housed within an early grocery store in the Mill Street neighborhood. Downtown revitalization blends old and new assets that attract tourists and residents alike. From left to right, the historic Alamo Hotel connects with the more modern building that houses the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, UCCS Lecture Events Center. Across the street, within a non-historic but more traditional plaza of the Rockies building, one finds the UCCS Art Gallery illustrative of a newer downtown vibe. Uptown is the historic McAllister House built in 1871, now a museum. It provides a walk into early Colorado Springs history. The Fine Arts Center at Colorado College on the right is an Art Deco legend that has one of the best Southwest Native American and Hispanic collections in the United States. Number three is tourism. Very important to the Colorado Springs community. Many tourists come here to learn about the history and to experience our local uniqueness, such as that found in Alamo Park in South Downtown. The location for the former El Paso County courthouse, which was used between 1903 and 73 as a courthouse, is a beautiful granite building now, now housing our invaluable Pioneers Museum, 
where exhibits and events, as well as the incredible sculptures within its park, provide an education that state and local history provides. To the left, Nick Vinatucci, the pumpkin man, hands out free pumpkins to local school children, while the Catherine Lee Bates sculpture depicts her enchantment with Pikes Peak, about which she wrote a poem entitled America the Beautiful. Later set to music, it has become one of America's most recognizable songs. To the right is William Seymour, representative of those African Americans known as the Invisible Americans of the Pikes Peak region. Mr. Seymour, a successful dairy farmer, was an important contributor to both church and civic -like life in Colorado Springs. As a tourist, who doesn't like choices? The restored exchange, mining exchange building on the left is now a Wyndham Grand Hotel. The quaint Victorian home, one of two within the downtown location, provides a more intimate overnight option to visitors. The open air ridership as embodied by the bikes and scooters is an enjoyable alternative for those who want to see the downtown and surrounding area at eye level. Next are four to seven reasons for the viability of historic preservation. One is property value, values. Property values in local historic districts have greater rates of appreciation than properties elsewhere within the same city. Foreclosures in even many less prosperous historic neighborhoods were fewer than in the rest of the city. In general, homes in historic districts do better when the market is moving up and fall later and less steeply when markets decline. But let's concentrate a few moments on number seven, small businesses, the backbone of the American co economy. The use of historic buildings has a competitive edge since their spaces are often more affordable for small businesses. Photos to the right show only a few that we have downtown. Small Colorado Springs businesses provide diverse yet important services and products. The large windows and interesting architectural details of historic buildings, such as that on the right, still has its Colorado tour sign adver ad advertisement of years past. The large paned window and colorful green awning of hooked on books, and the multi paned rib ribbon windows of the Old Town Bike Shop create interest and attract shoppers who are looking for particular products and the services and the staff guidance these provide. Other examples for excellent reuse and repurpose for small businesses are from left to right, the brick building that is now Mountain Chalet, which has historically housed a variety of businesses, a 60, 60s modern movie theater, which now advertises a climbing wall and a small and small homes within a downtown neighborhood off South Nevada that have been renovate, renovated and offered as office space. Reason eight is young businesses, startups, and event venues are found in surprising places, even within alleys. The exuberance of youth and those with an entrepreneurial spirit find less expensive opportunities for their businesses and event spaces within the downtown area. Reason number nine is jobs in knowledge and creative class sectors, programs provided by the Catalyst in campus is but one avenue by which the entrepreneurial spirit in Colorado Springs is fostered. Located downtown within the historic Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe P Passenger Depot on the National Register, the Catalyst campus is where the entrepreneurial spirits are provided the opportunity to learn within a collaborative community and where the business community, aerospace industry, venture capitalism, and innovation intersect. Reasons 10 through 11 underscore the opportunities that are within historic areas that attract millennials who can work anywhere and want to enjoy amenities that are conveniently located within walkable cycling distances that can be reached by a variety of cycling roadway lanes and trails such as the Shooks Run Trail. Experts note that economic growth and vibrancy of an area are dependent on the young 
well-educated and talented who are attracted to these unique areas. The twelfth reason historic preservation is economically viable is that it provides density at a human scale. First, however, I hasten, I hasten to add that by density, I do not mean the attempts to densify what has already been appropriately built and zoned single family. From the inviting shop windows with colorful awnings and offices and residences above in the photo to the left, to the density of a bungalow court, to the former Giddings department store building to the right, now repurposed into lofts above and commercial businesses at street level, all provide a sense of community and encourage walkability. Reason number 13 is environmental responsibility. It is here I would like to emphasize two points. The first is a statement by Carl Elefante, past president of the American Institute of Architects, who said, the greenest building is the one already built. And the second is from a report by the U.S. National Trust for Historic Preservation, which discovered through a series of case studies that it takes 10 to 80 years for a new building that is 30% more efficient than an average performing existing building to overcome through efficient operations the negative climate change impacts related to the construction process. Trails and open space initiatives, smart development and surveys of historic properties are all valuable tools that promote awareness and lead to conservation of the city's historic built and natural environment. Smart growth is stewardship of the built environment and emphasizes sustainability, preservation, and reuse. Sustainability, preservation, and reuse are important. Diversity should emphasize the goal to raise the level of protection and opportunities for all neighborhoods. But let's pause a moment to backtrack and look at the 10 basic principles of number 14, smart growth as more specifically defined by place economics. Let us backtrack and look at the 10 basic principles of smart growth as laid out by Place Economics. These photos show the transition spearheaded by young visionary entrepreneurs who advocated for and worked hard to gather money in support of big investment to what I would like to call visionary reuse. The High Line in New York City and Reno in Denver. As you read through slides 26, 27, and 28, I would only ask you to evaluate what we have done, are doing, and are about to do in Colorado Springs and generate a report card. What do you agree or don't agree with. The photo was from the public process for Envision Shook's run. Number one, create a range of employment opportunities, mix land uses, take advantage of compact building design, create walkable in neighborhoods, and a range of housing opportunities and choices. Foster distinctive attractive communities with a strong sense of place. Preserve open space, farmland, nat natural beauty and critical environmental areas, strengthen and direct development towards existing communities, provide in advance a variety of transportation choices, urban and social infrastructure based on population projections. Make developmental decisions sustainable, predictable, fair, and cost-effective. Encourage community and stakeholder collaboration in development decisions and cost-effectiveness in decision-making. Affordable housing does exist within our historic fabric. 
Examples are the string of pearls behind the old level school and a beautiful home in the affordable Mill Street neighborhood, a neighborhood that is in jeopardy of being gentrified. Gentrification is the process whereby the character of a poor urban area is changed by the influx of more affluent people, the construction of less affordable housing, and the attraction of new businesses, which sell products and services unaffordable to people with lower incomes. Typically, this displaces families who had once lived in a once affordable neighborhood. Open land, such as this in downtown, provide opportunities. Such vacant land could provide the opportunity for more diverse urban planning in the form of mixed building types and more affordable housing in a neighborhood-friendly setting. Clear vision, planning over time, and incentives are key to this co-housing area and the business, business located in its western boundary. Reason 17 is the first place of return. This home, located in an historic neighborhood in Colorado Springs, is representative of one style of architecture found on the west side, in the Old North End, Shooks Run, Bonneville, and the Patty Jewett neighborhoods. In addition to their contribution to our sense of place, historic neighborhoods represent cultural and age diversity. Older buildings, such as One C's and the Perkins Shearer Block, the Giddings Building, and the former Hibbridge Department Store have been repurposed into lofts, office space, and commercial businesses at street level. And finally, former industrial sites, such as the photo on the far right, provide edgy artistic spaces that attract artists, artists and their clientele. Tax generation is reason number 18. On the left, a once viable community business, Penny's, long closed, and the historic Alamo Hotel on the right become opportunities for investors to repurpose. Such benefits to the community attract more people, new development, such as these apartments that accommodate people who want a downtown lifestyle. Historic properties attract opportunities for growth. Preservation of historic structures and increasing their value attracts reinvestment by the private sector and preserve the tax base. Formerly the roundhouse and maintenance for city's trolleys, the trolley block now accommodates small restaurants on Moreno Street, just east of South Cascade Avenue, and has attracted further development such as the new apartments across the street and the need for a market nearby on Nevada Avenue. To say that historic districts are largely frozen in time is untrue. Our community's historic fabric does allow cities to evolve. Two examples of this are the photos on the right where the historic fabric provides cultural value and a sense of place in where growth is anything but static. This is illustrated by Widener Field that accommodates that occupies a former industrial site on the edge of Mill Street neighborhood and historic old Colorado City, a walkable area of unique businesses. On the National Historic National Register of Historic Places, Old Colorado City beckons both tourists and locals alike. Spearheaded by David Hughes and Wes Colburn as financial advisor, the story about Old Colorado City's Main Street reju rejuvenation and national historic status underscores the power of leadership, creative solutions, and incentives. More information about this, effect, this effort may be found online and in the archives of westpioneer.com, westsidepioneer.com. The History Colorado website at HistoryColorado.org provides state and federal tax credit information. 
The purpose of historic preservation is to promote awareness of our history and its value to the community. The photo on the left illustrates what's, what can diminish and inappropriately densify and erode an historic neighborhood. Historic preservation does allow cities to evolve and branding conveys a sense of place. Over time, the Colorado Springs brand has evolved into two brands, now referred to as the Olympic City and identified by the Olympic Paralympic Museum. The city was first known and for many of us is still fondly referred to as a city of sunshine, a label grounded in a consistent reality because of the area's fantastic climate, the beauty of its landscape, and the healthful environment that supports a variety of outdoor activities. The legacy loop, as shown on the map, is what our fo city founder, General Palmer, dreamed of as a part of the Colorado Springs Park system. This 10-mile loop around the city, highlighted with red stars, is connected by the Pikes Peak Greenway and Shooks Run trails. The section outlined in blue is the area of Envision Shooks Run, the city's evolutionary vision for the eastern edges of the trail, which is also informed by the extensive public process. Again, preservation is a catalyst the trolley block's eastern edge on South Tejon Street between East Cimarron and East Moreno Streets has been the catalyst for new restaurants, private law firms and other firms, and office space and other small businesses. Nestled within this four-square block is a, the past, the present, and opportunities for the future. Museums, libraries, public art, public schools, and events are often located within walking distance of the Colorado Springs historic neighborhoods. The City Auditorium, El Paso Club, and Payne Chapel, now an event center, are examples. A major initiative to modernize and update the City Auditorium to accommodate a variety of classes in the arts is underway. Historic neighborhoods, especially those which incorporate historic districts, are more stable. Long-term residency is an indicator of stability. These homeowners often feel a heightened sense of responsibility to maintain their homes and community spaces and are more likely to invest mentally, monetarily, and emotionally. But stop. Historic neighborhoods, especially those which incorporate historic districts, are more stable. Long-term residency is an indicator of stability. These homeowners often feel a heightened sense of responsibility to maintain their homes and community spaces and are more likely to invest mentally, monetarily, and emotionally in their neighborhoods. Vacancy is not an issue. In summary, Place economics often addresses older historic neighborhoods in decline. On the whole, Colorado Springs historic neighborhoods have been maintained or continually revitalized. Caution, watch out for urban renewal, rezoning, and inappropriate roadway intrusions. And finally, be aware, become involved. Smart growth requires attention, collaboration, and vision. The Historic Preservation Alliance supports efforts to maintain the city's historic fabric. Two such in initiatives that this nonprofit supported were the appropriate renovations of the J Jimmy Burns House in the Old North End and the Union Printer's Home, its preservation, renovation, and repurpose. The HPA provides many educational opportunities. May is Preservation Month, tours, eight local tours, and one special tour each summer, winter lectures, 
and the May Forum, which is educational. HPA takes on challenges. The Harlan Wolf Homestead at 905 Cheyenne Road, for which HPA has received one grant from History Colorado, Colorado will require two more grants to complete the renovation, add interpretive signage, and finally create a working space for the organization. The second but simultaneous challenge for HPA is bringing back the Tahama Spring Bridge and Pavilion. Yes, Colorado Springs does have a mineral spring on the west bank of Monument Valley Creek, just south of the swimming pool's bathhouse and southeast of the baseball diamond in Monument Valley Park. Because this project is so extensive and expensive, the process will have to move forward in stages. The outreach for funding will of necessity be comprehensive. Grassroots participation is crucial. It takes a community. Determine your interest, the amount of free time you can use, and the level of engagement you enjoy. Please contribute what you can, when you can. It takes a community, whether privately or publicly, become involved in historic preservation activities. Join the HPA in one of its committees. Attend lectures, tours, and other educational opportunities. Become active in your neighborhood organization. Engage politically. Provide historic preservation support. Stewardship is an important component. Engage in historic preservation. It is helpful, fun, and rewarding. Do we have any questions? <laughs>